Welcome to Mighty Married Moms. Join us at our kitchen table twice a week as the Mighty Married Moms, Debbie, Linda, Wendy, invite spectacular guests to weigh in on staying sexy, vibrant, and healthy, building marriages with soul-satisfying connection, raising happy, healthy, successful kids. Conversations with Mighty Married Moms will bring you closer to the life you really want. Episode 91. Today's show is brought to you by Deborah C. Owen, Family and Life Coach at YouCanRaiseGreatKids.com. If you are tired of worrying about the choices your kid is making or tired of the stress of constantly arguing with your kids or them arguing with each other, then don't wait until you are truly desperate. Get the help you and your family need and deserve today. Connect with your kids with calm compassion. Call Deborah Owen at 978-835-4354. Hi, and welcome to Mighty Married Moms. I'm Linda from All Well Breaks Loose. And I'm Wendy from connectagain.org. And I'm Debbie from youcanraisegreatkids.com. And we are here today. We have the distinct honor and pleasure of talking with Lauren Reidinger. Lauren Reidinger, she is an inspirational entrepreneur and internet mogul. She's been changing the face of beauty and online shopping for 20 years. Lauren was named as one of Vogue's top 100 most influential women and her personal blog, laurensworld.com, was named as one of Forbes' top 100 websites for women. Nice. Lauren's outstanding business accomplishments were also recognized when she was named Women Entre Extraordinaire in 2010 <laughs> and Top 50 Entrepreneurs by Business Leader Magazine in 2009 and 2010. She was named Entrepreneur of the Year by Business Leader Magazine three years in a row. Wow. Lauren is the creator of the award-winning cosmetic line, Modus by Lauren Reidinger which we are all wearing, just so you know, <laughs> and the uber luxurious skincare line Cellular Laboratories, founder of the jewelry line Lauren Jewels, and senior vice president of the internet retailing giant Market America and Shop.com. With over one million followers on social media, Lauren has been named one of the top 50 most motivational people on the web and Twitter. Lauren's wow. passion to help others led her to involvement in many charitable causes, such as Rally for Kids with Cancer, which she co-chairs with Ava Longoria. She also works with the American Heart Association, from whom she received the 2010 Big Heart Humanitarian Award, Make-A-Wish Foundation, Jennifer Lopez Foundation, Cystic <laughs> Fibrosis Foundation, the Rush Philanthropic, Philanthropic Arts Foundation, and many others. But I have to say personally, because I am an unfranch unfranchised owner with uh, marketamericashop.com is that I love you, Lauren, because I think you've taken your passion for fashion and beauty, which are things that we see on the outside, but much like Oprah in a way. You're like Oprah, or she's like you maybe. Um, <laughs> we have, you have this magical way of empowering women deep inside their hearts to bring out the best in themselves, love who they are, and feel courageous. So that's why I love you, and that's why we wanted to have you on the show today. Yeah. I'm so excited to be here with you guys. You guys are amazing. And that was, uh, I'll pay you later for that introduction. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a big fan. And so tell us a little bit, Lauren, just sort of, you know, a little bit about your journey, you know, just a brief kind of. Yeah, I think everybody thinks it was always so um, easy to get here. And, of course, there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears anytime you're trying to rise to the top especially when you know you and your husband are broke and when I met him back, oh my God, I think 26 years ago, you think to yourself, <clears throat> wow, how are we going to make anything out of nothing? <laughs> and, uh, and I think it was all passion and drive and I think the, the, the really undying passion not to quit. You know, it's really mm -hmm. easy to quit and uh, achieving success is not nearly as hard as most people think because most people quit before they really start. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. they don't show up for the, the job. You know, if you're going to be a great firefighter, firefighter you're going to be a great plumber, show up for the job. <laughs> you know, the first step is to get, you got to arrive. And, uh, you know, I, I always find myself waiting at home for somebody to show up. And I always think it's so much easier to succeed than people think because most people don't even try. And I think that, um, you know, success is, is, is easy to achieve when you kind of adjust your schedule in order to achieve it. So people say, oh, I don't have time to really make it happen because I, you know, I have to go to soccer practice with my kids and I have to, you know, uh, drive, I'm a chauffeur and nobody understands that more than me. You have to cook dinner, you have to get everything ready and I did all that stuff because there was nobody to do it in the beginning days. You know, get, get up, take my daughter to school, come home, help with the homework, work in between, have the dinner ready. There was nobody else to do it. But if you really want to succeed, 
you can. You just sometimes have to adjust your schedule. That means you might have to sleep less. And I tell people, I hate to say that, but it's true. Because if you put in a few extra hours at night when you're alone and the kids are sleeping, the husband's sleeping, and you have a little bit of me time, you can start to figure out what you want to do. Like you said, you know, you could be an unfranchised owner. There's so many opportunities for women out there today. Of course, not just shop.com, but many others where you can, you know, do things while you're working from home and, and make money and utilize your skills. Because I always believe as moms, our skills are the hardest, right? Yeah. Uh, we, have to, we have to juggle so many things at once and be so many people, to, uh, so many people to so many other people all the time. We wear a lot of hats. We wear right. a lot of hats. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's, yeah. A, and that's a, 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 a thankless position sometimes. Right. You know what I mean? And so I think, you know, we don't get enough credit, which is why my big belief about empowering women uh, to achieve what they want is always so important because, you know, I remember when I was first raising Amber, I felt like, you know, okay, hello over here. You know, give me some attention for all the stuff I'm doing, not just at work, but also raising your daughter, doing the things that need to be done uh, to, to, to make everything to come together. And I think until you have people around you who really recognize that, it's hard for women. Yeah. And I just happen to be lucky enough to be married to somebody who's very supportive of it and, and very encouraging and sees the value of both uh, and the importance of both. And I think, you know, we undervalue our, ourselves as women sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, do you think, Lauren, too, we undervalue ourselves and, and it's an incredibly difficult job to be CEO, so to speak, of your household um, and run everything. And I think there's a lot of pressure today, too, for women to be excelling in every area. And they look at someone like you and they go, well, you know, she's she can do it or, you know, she's already there and they don't realize, um, you know, what, like you said, what the journey is like. But I don't know. Um, what are your thoughts about that and women feeling like they have to be perfect in every area? It's not going to be a perfect journey, think, right? First of all, I don't think there's any such thing. I mean, <clears throat> people ask me all the time, what's the formula to success? How do you balance it all? I don't. I mean, I'm a master juggler, uh, you know, and I feel like that's all I can be. I give the best I can. So I make sure that, you know, I have time for my family and I put my, my daughter, my grandkids first. But at the same token, I have my business that's very important. So I try to fit it all in, mm -hmm. include being a good wife, which probably, you know, I'm not the best at making the coffee and being the domestic one. <laughs> but, you know, I, found, I find other ways of making up for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially when you're home alone in bed, right? That's what you have to do. So, I mean, that's a very important part of being having a good marriage. Right. Um, and then, you know, when everybody goes to sleep, I find time for me. Yeah. And that's why I stay up sometimes so late. Uh, because I need time for me. I need time for me to figure out the things that I want to do, the next step I want to do in achieving success, what's on my mind, to evaluate it, to see if it makes sense and if it's worthy of my time. Because I've learned one thing, achieving success. You know, I used to have all the time in the world about 20, you know, five years ago when we started and didn't have any money. You know, you have a lot of time but no money. Right. Now you have a lot of money and no time. No time. Yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of a paradox. So you think to yourselves, like, how do I make this work? So for me, everything that's important to me has to be valued by time. Yes. You know, because otherwise it's not worth doing. And that's why I say, whatever you're going to do in your life, uh, whatever it is that makes you happy, whatever it is that you want to achieve, it better make you smile. Because we do enough things already every single day that don't make us happy. Right. And uh, if it's not fun, it's not worth doing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know? How did you decide? Like, I think sometimes for me, and I think a lot of uh, women, you have lots of ideas, and then you think, well, what direction do I go in? I don't even know which direction to take. And, you know, you've been able to build a cosmetic line, and you've got your blog, and you do all these charitable organizations. And so, so what's the voice in your head that says, yeah, this is the direction That's I the should one, go right? in? You know, what's yeah, I, think, I think it's vetting it out to myself, you know, I think I'm not my harshest critic, you know, everybody around me, especially my husband is always, uh, you know, at, at first, you know, before I really started creating my own brands, his big thing was, you got to make sure it could work, because I have a great mentor, you know, he's, he's a fabulous husband, a fabulous friend, and he knows how to help me vet through things, but I think I've gotten more so than him sometimes, because, you, you know, you're your worst critic, so first of all, I think everything through, and I make sure that I have a niche market. You know, I make sure that whatever I'm looking to do, uh, I can fill a void. Because if you can't fill a void, it's another me too. And then you got to figure out, okay, well, that's okay. There's a lot of me too's that work, but how are you going to make your stand out differently? And that's harder. 
that's harder to do than having a void that you can fill. So, and then really defining that void, so for me, you know, with motives, there was definite, clear defining a void of, uh, there's lots of makeup companies, but there's not a lot of people who can, you know, go to a woman who understands and, and have her work with her in her home and, and, you know, be able to cover ranges of shades of skin tone and color. And I felt like that was missing in the marketplace. And, uh, you know, with, with uh, my jewelry, making it more affordable for women to get into something that felt really ultra glamorous. Uh, or skincare, that making it affordable. Those things for me, um, and, and even shop.com, you know, having a website where we're different, we're filling a niche void because people are looking to save money. Everybody, I don't care how much money you make, I look to save money every single day. Yeah. So my point is having a company like shop.com that pays cash back for people shopping on the internet, it, it fills a void that doesn't exist really. And how do we stand out to be different? So you have to think, whatever your idea is, does it stand out? What sets me apart from everybody else? Does it fill a void? How am I going to deal with? And I think through every single major problem that could happen prior to it happening. How would I battle this? How would I answer this? You know, can I do this? And if I can't come up with those answers, it's a bad idea to begin with. If I can't. Just, it's a very interesting perspective to really try to walk through every worst case scenario and say, how can I, how can I deal with that? And yeah. if you can't deal with it, then go in another direction. That makes it a lot clearer, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And I think it's, it's helped me uh, really achieve success. So my husband always tells me like you bat a hundred percent every time. I said, that's because I think through the failures first. Mm. So, you know, because he's like, is there anything you do that hasn't worked? You know, he kind of makes fun of me sometimes now laughing at if I launch a brand because, you know, before I used to say to him, okay, I want to launch a cosmetic line. It'll take millions of dollars. And he would be like, okay, and how is, I'm willing to do that with you, but how's that not going to fail? And, you know, I would give him the answer. And now if I ask him for anything, he'll write a check for anything because he knows it'll work because I'm the one who's the hardest on myself. I think through the project. And I won't let it fail. And, if, and I know the answers before I launch. I know what I'm going to say before I launch. I know how it will succeed. And that doesn't mean I don't make mistakes. Of course I make mistakes, but everybody makes mistakes. Part of the, the process of mistakes and, and failure is you learn from them. If you didn't have them, how would you know? Right. Exactly. Right. But right. I don't think that you can launch something where you don't know the answer to what makes you different, what makes you fill a void. How can you answer and overcome obje obje uh, objections and questions that people might come up with? Then you shouldn't do it, you know? Mm. Right, 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 right. right. And also, so right, uh, knowing that even when you do know all those things and you do decide to launch, it's not going to go perfectly like you imagined, you know, there, yeah. <laughs> right? There's never, never a bump in the road because you figured it all no, out, right? right so right. you have to be willing, to, as you said, to it, it never out, does. Yeah, and, and keep going. Right. Yeah, and that's why I always say it's it's really much easier to succeed than people think. They just are not willing to think it through. Mm -hmm. You know, because I can think of a million businesses that we could all giggle at right now, but we'd all wish that we owned a piece of them. Do you oh, know what yeah. I mean? Oh, like, oh, yeah. oh yeah. my God, that girdle we all have to wear when we want to wear, you know, put throw on spanks, and yet it's a billion-dollar company. You know, why didn't I think of that? I used to wrap myself with, you know, a, a saran wrap. Yeah. You know? And so there's things that, uh, that, that two women thought of that nobody else thought of that That's worked. Right. And they That's had right. a way to fill. And people knew, like, hey, I want to look smooth under my clothes. Yeah. This yeah. Cool. yeah. And, and so I always have so much respect for women who really keep hard at work and, and achieve what they want to achieve and have bumps. There's a lot of bumps in the road for people who are successful. Uh, I still have them every single day, but you know, you get past them, you see the bigger picture of things. Right. And uh, you know, you, you still succeed because you push through it. You, you know, and uh, I eat problems for, for breakfast. I say that every day. I yeah. Problems for breakfast. Yeah. So, so Lauren, what would you say if there's a woman who's listening or watching and she, she has kind of a vision for herself or her family. Um, but she's afraid to take that first step. Yeah. You know, it's, it's scary to take that first step. Yeah. What would you do to encourage her or what other kinds of things would you say to her? I think the thing to do is, and I've always said this to anyone because I've done it. I find a mentor, somebody I role model, look up to in that environment. You know, for me, when it came to makeup, I was really fascinated with people like Estee Lauder. I thought that she was remarkable. I, you know, the fact that she started in her home mixing products together, wow. didn't have any money and, you know, launched basically through one-on-one uh, -on -one through people. Uh, and, you know, that was her philosophy back then. Of course, it grown up to be one of the biggest giants, if not the biggest 
cosmetic company ever, but I was fascinated with her uh, not being afraid to ask questions. Uh, she was not afraid, and that's what I do. I found a mentor. I looked up to them. I, I asked questions. People are flattered when you ask them, hey, look, I really, I, I, meant, I, I really look to you as my mentor. I idolize you. I enjoy watching what you do. Is there any way you can give me some pointers? And I think that's important, not being afraid to ask, because people are really flat. When people ask me it, I don't have time to sit there on the phone for two hours, but I love answering people's emails and say, you know what, you just can't give up. Find somebody you can trust. Talk to them. Let somebody mentor you. Ask them if you can interview them, because most people with a decent heart will take the time to help somebody, even if it's just with a simple conversation. That simple conversation can go so far. Right. And I always say it's just important to find somebody that you look up to, ask questions, and follow what they're doing and then see how you can do it a bit differently. Mm. That makes sense. I mean, that makes a lot of sense because really if, if I'm one of those women who's afraid to move forward, right, and I look at you and I go, I can't do that. But if I talk to you and I ask you some questions, you'll say, you know, it wasn't all that easy. I started in a two-room apartment, you know, and, 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 and working out of the garage and, you know. And, and I didn't have a garage. <laughs> you didn't have a garage, right? right. So then, yeah, so it gives you perspective so you don't, because you don't just jump to the top. You have to take it step by step by step. So fear is, I think, for me, when I've felt, felt fearful, is I'm always seeing the end result thinking, I can't imagine what, you know, what the steps are in between. But if you talk to people, like you said, that you admire that are doing things that you would like to do, getting paid to do the things that you would pay to do, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I think also, you know, with social media, we leverage the marketplace in a different way. You know, today, women who want to start out with new brands or new companies and launch their own business or, or be a rep for somebody else have a, a way to build their brand on social media uh, and today it's leveraged the, the playing field. I mean, you don't have to invest thousands, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars in TV advertising, print advertising. Everything's changed. Uh, it's a oh, whole new world out there. Nobody watches TV anymore and waits for the commercial. And we certainly, I used to remember when, you know, uh, advertisements and magazines were out. I'd rip them all out. And that was my tear sheet of things I wanted to get today. I never go through a magazine today. It's changed over the years. So social media is what we look to to see what people are using. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Instagram, yes. Facebook. So you, you can invest in your business and in yourself, and it doesn't cost you any money. It costs you time. Right. And that's the one thing I told you in the beginning of my business. It took a lot of time. But if you're not willing to invest the time in yourself, you can't succeed anyway. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I find that so helpful, the whole mentorship thing. And you're right. People are flattered. People do want – they. we do have generous spirit. Like, if you know, I mean, I think we've all – it might, people aren't coming up to me asking me for business advice, but people certainly come up to me and say, can you help me think through this problem? And I'm like, I would drop anything if anybody called and said, right. I would. Like, they're I'm, asking you for advice on, yeah. on what you specialize in. And people, right, exactly. People exactly. appreciate that. They need that. And so it's no different than us. I always say, you know, it's no different than us going to our doctor to ask him for advice on something we're doing. People admire other people. And those people are flattered when somebody asks them for help or assistance or just some guidance. Just to be noticed is like, really? You think I can help you? Sure. You know, that's, yeah, I think that's really powerful. And I don't, I think it's an under, un, unutilized approach. And it's interesting. Or, I was talking to a friend of a friend the other day who told me, hey, I want to, uh, this young boy wanted to be a sports agent and he didn't know where to go. So we connected him with a friend who's a lawyer who's actually a sports agent you know, with one of our friends who's, you know, big basketball players and things like that. And the kid was like 18 or 19 years old. And the guy took two hours out of his time to wow. help him and, and walk him through what the steps were in order to be a successful uh, sports agent down the road and the things that he should do first and the people he should speak to and how he should carry himself and confidence. And I was thinking to myself, that's exactly what I did my whole life. I looked up to people and I wasn't afraid to ask them for help and ask them for advice of what do you think I should do. And you collect that information. It's not the end all, end all, but you collect it and you use it. Mm -hmm. You absolutely you use what fits. Yes. Fits yeah. your own. And you make it your own too. Right. And you make it your own. That's right. That's right. right. Yeah. Well, I was just, just thinking if you wanted to be a sports agent and you had two hours with a really successful sports agent over a cup of coffee, that's like three semesters worth of college credit. 
Exactly. Right? Yeah. People, yeah. It's so much easier to ask people for some help. My goodness. And some guidance in order to succeed, because at least you're on the right road to success. Absolutely. And Absolutely. The, only, the only thing is, though, there, there are a lot of um, people who would be in that mentorship position where that's actually part of their business model is to charge people to give their advice. Yeah. So, I mean, I certainly know a lot of people like that. I mean, if you're just going to have a, 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 you know, take somebody out for a cup of coffee or, or t chat with them, uh, you know, on Skype for half an hour, 45 minutes, that's one thing. But there are a lot of people who, I mean, that's what they do is they charge to give their advice. Yeah. yeah. Of course. And maybe I think, too, it is, it's nothing wrong with having a conversation with somebody and say, you know, what? I don't have the type of money to pay you, but I really model what you, I want to model what you've done. I admire what you've done. I don't know how you've done it. I just want a little pump up conversation of how this can be done. Yeah. I, I idolize you. And that has always taken me so far when I, I got I, I to tell you, I think this is the difference between men and women because <laughs> seriously, because most well, of the men that I know who, if, if I were to, you know, they would be willing to do a little bit, but a lot of the men that I know in um, kind of the internet marketing industry and, and a lot of the related fields, they're going to charge you. They're going to say, yeah, here's my calendar. Sign up for a time. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that'll be $500. <laughs> no, like I, think, I think there's so many differences between men and women. Clearly, <laughs> there are so many differences. Yeah. Uh, you so know, the one I was reading this study the other day where they were saying that men and women were doing a study for the same, they were in Harvard and they were both working on the same type of program and succeeding watching these two groups men versus women launch new businesses and what made them more successful than others and how they reacted and it said that men when when men succeeded and other people complimented him he would just be like well that's you know because I'm that's great what I do. I'm yeah. like, Good, that's what I do and when a woman was asked well wow that's amazing how'd you do it and she'd be like well it was lucky and it was I was hard work and you know and and she went through the process where men it's just like I'm Superman mm -hmm. and that's not real I'm sorry <laughs> not right. Superman. It's ingenuous yeah totally yeah. you know just thinking you know Debbie Debbie's daughter is studying to be a nurse and so when when if, if your daughter were to say to me, I would love to pick Wendy's brain about being an oncology nurse, I used to be a cancer nurse, and I would certainly give her daughter two, three, five hours of my time to talk about the ins and outs of oncology nursing, mm -hmm. but I would never think to charge her for it. No, well, right. in that way, it only has to be a half hour for some people. Right, Absolutely. Right, 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 yeah. right, it doesn't have right. to be. Minutes can make a difference for somebody who just won't quit now. Right, right. right. Right, you know, right. And then I always think that right when you think you're getting ready to quit, you should just stop. Don't throw in the towel because success is right around the corner. It's right around. It's, isn't that true? Isn't that true? Yeah. It's, what, what it reminds me of is it's darkest before the dawn. Mm -hmm. Yes. And right when the, the woman's about to give birth to the baby is when she's like, get me out of here. I'm done. I'm not doing this. And that's just when the baby's about to really push through the, the most <laughs> painful day. I've never done it myself, but this is what they tell me. I did, it, I did it, and it's like that, so you can't. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, when, and when climbing to the top and, the, you know, it gets heavy and there's people pulling you down, cut the rope and keep climbing. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I like Let that. everybody off the rope because that the negativity is something I've refused mm -hmm. to have in my life. You know, I pick and choose my friends very carefully, and I have a very select group of, of friends that I've had for years and years, the same girls, and, and I always make sure I'm empowering myself by having women who empower me and vice versa, mm -hmm. uh, and all are entrepreneurial in some way, and we, we bounce ideas off of each other all the time, but yet we're in different businesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think it's important to find people who believe in you and are not negative, who are, you know, who are, who are only saying, man, you know you'll do this because you can do everything. That's right. You know, or you, you the three of us do that for each other, I would say. Sure, sure. Look, look what's happened. Your show's become so successful. So my point is, it works. Yeah, right. It does. And uh, yes. trying right. something is better than trying nothing. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm Showing like, up is better than giving up. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to ask you, I know just for me, listening to you and knowing a lot of your story because I have been at a couple of conferences. I've been in Greensboro and I've been in Miami and so forth. But success does not necessarily mean a million dollars a day. Success means I am living a life that, I, that, that feels very genuine to me and I know that I was, I was born to contribute something in the world and I'm doing it. So success doesn't have to be... The, it's not monetary. No, it's, it's about it's about managing 
the, 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 the peace and the happiness that you need to have in your life that makes you happy. So for me, success is not so much about what my bank account looks like. It never has been because I'm, I'm more of a giver. I like to give away. That Jerry always says, I don't understand how you, because thank God I, I keep a better checkbook than you because I'll give away all my money to everybody, all my friends, my family, whoever mm -hmm. needs it because – I'm not the person who's worrying about how much is left at the end of the day. You know what I mean? I'm trying to live by the moment. So he always tells me, like, if you ever need any money, you, you haven't checked your bank account, call me. <laughs> I laugh at him, but I think, um, you know, the formula for success, like I told you, I'm a master juggler. But for me, the formula for success is finding out a way to manage time with everybody who you love everybody who you want to spend your time with mm -hmm. and, and, and make it where you're not that's not pulling at you every day because you're managing that. So when, when Amber was growing up, it was very simple for me. Every day, no matter what somebody had, everybody had to sit down as a family at 6 p.m. and have dinner, period. So even though we had meetings at 7.30, I'd be like, well, the dinner's first. Everything else can be scheduled around it. So you make certain rules of your life where you say, you know what, Monday nights, now that my kid has kids, you know, Monday nights are the night that we're all going to have family together no matter what. You know what I mean? So you know, JR knows way in advance. Do not schedule for a meeting and don't schedule yourself. We can't do it. And I think, and of course, there's always exceptions to the rule, but when you kind of live by the general statement, Mondays are off limits, mm -hmm. then it works. Makes it easier. Totally. You, know, you know, you can manage your schedule that way. This way, you're not having people pull at you all day long. That's frustrating. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're like, how am I, you're never happy when you feel like you're running around trying to please everybody and you're unhappy at the end of the day. So I think setting boundaries is super important so you can manage your time because the time is the most valuable thing when we're starting. That's right. Yeah. It's the most valuable time thing anywhere. It's, it's, yeah. It's Once also, it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. And I think that's a really excellent tip. Like that's a really excellent way to put it because if you uh, create those times where this is family time, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Like you said, something may come up, but you're pretty much, that's what we're going to do. And you schedule everything else around it. It's very grounding, yeah. right? Because you're putting that most important thing first. 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 Totally. I mean, I think it, 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 it makes the partnership of marriage much easier. So it can't be like my husband saying, well, uh, I have to do this Monday night. So it's just me doing my portion and showing up for Monday night, family night. No, we all have to right. Because, <laughs> you know, I know a lot of friends who live by that. And it's like, okay, they're still waiting for their husband to show up for dinner or family. And they're the ones who are showing up every week. That's not cool. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, I was recently talking to this group of girls with, uh, who are MBA wives and MLB wives, and they were honoring me in an event. And I was like, you know, the reason why some of you are disturbed with your husbands because you don't set the ground rules. You know, in my home, there's ground rules. You know, first of all, we all do wonderful shows. I love you. You're a fantastic guy. But in home, you have to participate. Mm -hmm. Yes. And when you set the rules of participation with your spouse, your life will be happier. Right. Because everything's not falling on top of you. This is what I expect from you. And right. this is what you should expect from me. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're doing. Because because this part of our life is as important as being successful monetarily. Mm. So, you know, for me, the management of making all of it work together is what really is successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Every, every success in life pales if your relationships aren't lined up with your yeah. with your husband, your or your your whoever, your family, spouse and your yeah. and your family. If those are out of whack, you can have a large bank account or, or Lear Jet at your disposal, but if you're miserable on the inside. Oh, yeah. And that's what creates so many divorces because I don't think they work it out ahead of time. You mm -hmm. know, you just got to set the ground. It's wonderful that you do got 15 standing ovations, but now you're coming home. <laughs> and by the way, you need the trash needs to be taken out. Right. Yeah. 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 And women tend to, and I know we're we're we're, we're running out of time. time, but women tend to put the burden all that burden on themselves. You know. Yeah. And, and then they get resentful, and then they yeah. haven't done anything to solve the problem. So you have to blame yourself some. That's yeah. exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah. And what you're talking about is the 21st century marriage, which is to say, I have needs and I'm going to tell you what they are. And I'm interested in hearing what your needs are. And we need to talk about those right. because in the 20th century, people either said, oh, he'll never change. And they shut up and they checked out or they got really in somebody's face. Those yeah. were the kind of the two options in times gone by. But now there's a little bit more of like, I'm going to be firm and clear, and I'm interested in you to be firm and clear. Or if you, or you think about your own parents. I mean, I think about my own parents. I love my parents. I had great parents. But my mother was 
everything to everybody and nobody ever took care of her first. So my dad took advantage of dinner's ready at six. If dinner wasn't ready at six, where's dinner? Yeah. That would be a nightmare in my house. I've seen, I've seen people do that. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back in the day when I was growing up, I remember dreading if my mother was five minutes late on the dinner because my dad would freak out, not angry, but just like, where's dinner? Because they yeah. come to expect certain things. And today it's got to be different. Yeah, absolutely. Partnership, partnership, partnership. Absolutely. Yeah. So, right. but just quickly before we go, mm -hmm. because Lauren, you know, you don't look like a grandmother. <laughs> you're certainly not your, your stereotypical grandmother, but you are. You have a beautiful daughter and two beautiful grandchildren. And how much do you love being a grandma? Oh my God. I think it's probably the greatest moment of my life. I say to myself, the thing I've worked so hard for all these years, I, and I didn't slow down for the last 25 years, and I kept going and going through my aneurysm, through so many different battles and challenges and bumps in the road. I think I finally got to the point when, this, when, when my grandson and granddaughter were born, I realized this is why I did it all. And I say in a cram time of 20 years, because I now get to schedule my life around seeing those kids. Yeah. Yeah. And that I'm in charge of my schedule. And yet I can still do the things I want to do, but I've now adjusted my whole schedule. So I'm doing everything that I do that relates to work or something that I need to get done between like 11 and 2.30 when they're sleeping. And then guess what? I can go see them whenever I want to see them. I can play with them. And they're so happy that Mimi's around whenever yeah. she uh, wants to be around. And I think it's, Real living. I think for the first time in my life, I'm really understanding what life's about. Oh, that's it's, awesome. It's the greatest moment of my life. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time. I know, but we have to do this again. Okay. Yes, we would, would love to great. do it again. Together. There's so much to talk to you about that we, yeah. we haven't even touched on. We had all these a list, you know? <laughs> I know, but we had fun. Yeah, yeah, we had fun. We talked about a lot of great things, and yeah. maybe we'll get you to talk to us again in the future. I that would will be really anytime. fabulous. Yeah, so thank you again, I Lauren. I love you guys. Had so much fun. We and love I'll you. We love you so much. And, and um, this has been really a blast. And to all of our listeners, thank you for listening in. Thank you for watching. And please go to iTunes, give us a rating and review, and tell all your friends um, about this episode. They're going to want to listen in. And thank you so much, and have a fabulous day. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Mighty Married Moms. Tune in twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays to meet fascinating and inspiring guests who will help you create the life you've always wanted. You can find these episodes and special gifts just for you at MightyMarriedMoms.com as well as a link to our Facebook community where we continue the conversation around the kitchen table. Please also help share the love by leaving a review on iTunes. We'll see you next time.